What's your general marketing mix on how do you get people who don't necessarily know you exist into the store in the first place? Yeah, good question. It's always something that we're working on. Um, SEO, SEM. Mm -hmm. That's a rep that we work with right really often. And Canvas Creative Group. So we work with a couple of different firms that are well known for um, doing that. So on the web, trying to be every time you you know Google dispensary near me, that we're the ones showing up, um, and then we rank you know high as we possibly can and pay for ads uh, online. So that's the big one. Is that's you know a good way to let people know. Um, we engage in social media. We've had our account shut down unfortunately, so we lost a lot of uh, early. Uh, followers that we you yeah. know built over a good time it took about yeah i think we have been about a year and then they shut us down so we're sort of building that back up again that's hard though because um the rules are constantly changing um and sometimes it's hard to tell how effective it is it seems like it's all the cannabis people all liking each other's stuff uh whether it's really like your customers doing it but you have to do it um Certainly the website, just the design of the website. We, we went with a, uh, with a overlay on, uh, what is ultimately chain, um, functionality for e-commerce and wanted our own look and feel for our site. We thought that was important, uh, as opposed to relying on the very sort of, uh, generic Dutchy or chain, uh, sort of out of the box solution. So we wanted it something that sort of, makes it, um, and you know email marketing um we do we have a very large email marketing list uh and so we are constantly not constantly trying out on a uh, on a respectful uh basis uh reach yes. people out so like today we have a we have a clone day coming up it's the first time we've done that uh, a lot of people have done that uh, many different times being a city store we just hadn't gotten around to it yet right. um so we're doing a clone day so i had a you know an email um today that was a clone email that went out at noon and i already I think I'm already sold out of my clones or I'm going to come close to it. Nice. Um, so, you know, that's effective. And then we have weekend specials. We were known very early and, and we've sort of moved away from it as, the, as we sort of changed our margin, mix for margin, um, of doing daily specials. So we have a pre-roll Monday where it's like all one gram pre-rolls are basically mm. $10 a piece. Um, three for 30, four for 40, five for 50, all the way up to whatever you want. Um, and we had a, Two tin Tuesday deal, which was two 1906 tins uh, on Tuesdays for the price of one. We had a one on Wednesday, which was three for 75. Uh, we have a two for Thursday, which is two eights for discounted price. And then we run weekend specials Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Every weekend we run specials, and it's always a discount uh, on usually flour, pre roll, edible, vape, drink. A concentrate so we're always running sort of a new special uh on every weekend and so it's a lot of reaching out to people with those specials um to get them to sort of come in um but you know over time we had to learn how to protect and keep our margins strong um yeah you know giving away products great but it's not a way to really grow a business it's a way to get people through your door but you really need to continue to pay for things so right. um you know, over time, we've really learned how to strike better deals and run smarter promotions uh, and have it more of a 360 where it's like there's a post, there's an email, uh, there's an in-store and there's a web, you know, mm. all together and a pop up. So it's all sort of feeding each other. Yeah. Um, and again, it's just something we've had to learn over time because we were not retailers. And mm. in many ways, we are not retailers. And that was our strength is sometimes also our weakness. I think mainly our strength, though, we had to figure things out. And through figuring it out, we've sort of figured out interesting and newer ways um, to do things. Um, so again, I do think sometimes our uh, having not come from a large background in traditional retail uh, was helpful. Uh, we didn't know right. what rules we weren't supposed to break. Right, right. Trial and error. Uh, sometimes it could cost you a lot of time, but more more times than not, cost you a lot of money as well. But yeah. you know, at least you 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 learn something at the end of the day, which is most Absolutely. important. Um, and I know we we're chatting about this earlier, but you know, we can kind of discuss you know after this, you know, a little bit of the the sales analysis with GPT and things like that that we were talking about before that I think would be super super interesting. Um, but yeah, again, we can chat about that in a in a little bit. Yeah, we've learned <laughs> a lot. I mean, it's it's you know that's really been one of the biggest educations. Is is, uh, is you know product mix uh, right. buying and pricing um, yes you know because our industry is uh, caught in a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a death spiral mm -hmm. with price they really think yes. that it's a chase to the bottom which it's not um, and if you yeah. look at the more mature markets they do have $15 rates but they also have $50 rates um, 
And there's a reason for that because there are people who are figuring out how to establish value. Yes. In the thing. It's not just tack, you know, the, the 30 plus percent THC, uh, you know, strain sort of, you know, uh, always new different names of strains, right? Like sort of moving away from that and, you know, and, and the customers are becoming a little more educated, but there's still an enormous amount they don't know. Um, and sometimes they don't really care. Um, they don't necessarily care as much about this stuff as uh, we do. Um, they want what they want and they sort of want to usually, and you know, we're in the Northeast, they want it quick. Um, they want to get in, they want to get out, they want to get on with their lives. And so, you know, learning to temper and make our, uh, our menu reflective of the people coming through our door is something you again have to learn over time. And again, protecting your margins to make sure you have a safe and smart business. Um, we don't like to participate in driving for the bottom. Hmm. Uh, we yeah. will always have products that are um, more cheaply priced, but they tend to be products that are not as high quality. And that's right. sort of a trade off to it. You know, people think, oh, over time, it's just going to be, you're going to get the highest quality stuff for nothing. It's like, no, it's not, it's not, it's not the way businesses are going to work, right? Or, or is it going to? It? Also, the reliance on sort of THC and TAC, you know, the analogy to uh, the alcohol industry is like, no, everybody isn't just walking to Total Wine looking for the Everclear every time, right? It's like, <laughs> like give me, give me the stuff that'll give me the most. I want drunk the moonshine, like <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and there are, and there are people who want that. You yeah, have that yes. on your shelves for them. Exactly. Like they're the minority; they're not the majority. Yes. Um, yes. And I think what we're seeing over time is that people are moving away from that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. you know, you, you get into, first of all, thirty percent are lies, and we know. Mm -hmm. we know that the testing is a little bit off, right? We know that there's. A little bit. Just think about it as a like physical property. If yeah. you say, you hold something in your hand, you think if 30% of this is oil, this would really be a lot squishier than this is. Yes. Uh, so, you know, we know that that's a little bit, but even still, like whether you want to call that 30 is really 25, 25 is 20. I don't particularly enjoy the stuff that is too strong. I'm an older mm -hmm. guy, but like I never really did. It's too strong for me, but I love a well-balanced one, which is mm -hmm. just like, again, like a well-balanced wine or beer or something. I am not into, you know, taking the super alcoholic shots like i want a nice balanced drink like um and so i think we're starting to get there i think people are getting there it's just gonna take time um yeah. to get them to understand that oh maybe a you know an 18 to 19 percent um flower is actually fantastic maybe it's exactly what you want as yeah. opposed to give me the 28 29 and you're like well i'm having panic attacks it's like yeah because you're <laughs> smoking way too strong a stuff like of course you're having panic attacks right. um, it's it, you know and again the sativa indica mix the hybrid you know but you know uh, i also uh, again i'm sometimes a bit of an old fogey i really hate the names of a lot of strains just think it's so childish i just think as an industry if we really want to take ourselves seriously got to get away from having what sounds like teenage boys name our strains uh it's just it's just silly it just yeah. it's just it's just going to lend itself to being what is ultimately a juvenile we particularly my business partner and i really disliked the juvenile aspect of cannabis which mm. i also call a west coast aesthetic um i don't think there's anything wrong with it i think it is it is it is a time and a place it represents what was the early parts of the industry um but you know, it's a grown-up product for grown-ups, and it should be marketed that way. And it's starting to really happen. But in the early days, it was really like you know, too, too like reliant on again, just sort of a cartoony version of oh my god, we can get high. Like, yeah, yeah of course, like it's yeah. not a big deal. It's called the end zone. It's like you've been there before. Um, <laughs> it's like you know, it's not. It's it's just we don't have to be so sort of again, sort of uh, gobsmacked with the fact that we can get this stuff. So you know, I I really am a proponent for you know getting rid of some of these. <laughs> some of these really stupid uh strain names uh you know Avarino, what a great name for a strain right but it's the name of a wine like wine mm -hmm. industry does a really good job of naming you know grapes and things like that beers yeah. have done a pretty good job too of that like you know naming yeah. things in a way that you know, beers can get a little silly but like sort of things that are more evocative and feel a little bit more interesting grown up and, and sort of exciting um so you know there's a long way to go in our industry but like it's rapidly a evolving which is nice it's, these, these yeah. things are happening very quickly that's one of the exciting things about being in cannabis is that um it is a very fast moving business you think about how much has just changed in the year and a half that we've been open it's crazy